Hi everybody, this is Bastian and this is the analysis of the Morrow Gambit using a game I played against a 2100 plus ELO uh, engine called Monarch. So, um, the Morrow Gambit has a bad reputation in uh, literature and um, in fact there are some books that say that it has been refuted altogether and that's it's a bit harsh and it, it may or may not be so but if Black wants to play the Murrow Gambit, um, he uh, must be aware of a lot of complications that can arise. So I'm playing Black, so I'm playing the Murrow. And the game starts with uh, the Italian game. And now Black plays f5, the Murrow Gambit move. And the refutation of this move according to um, the books is um, d3 d3 opening up uh, the diagonals of both bishops allowing the knight to jump to um, c5 um, g5 that's now guarded and then perhaps knight or bishop to f7 also the knight move allows uh, queen h5 check which is now possible because there's no longer a pawn blocking uh, f7 so the moro gambit in a sense is a, a king's gambit with colors reversed um, or it may arise after playing the latvian gambit the difference of course or uh, the two pieces developed on c6 and uh, c4 Normally, there are a few ways to um, play against the Latvian Gambit, but in this case we can see that knight takes pawn on e5 is prevented. So, pawn takes pawn is possible, but the tame d3 under these circumstances uh, are much stronger because of um, the two bishop lines that are uh, active at this point. So in a way, um, White is ignoring Black's aggressive play and simply looking for an attack himself. So first, let's see what um, the problem is with the D3 refutation move. Now this move wasn't played in the game, thankfully. Um, what could Black try? Hmm. So if, for instance, Black plays symmetrically d6, which is a normal enough looking move, looking to uh, recapture on uh, f5. White can try knight to g5, so simply continue um, the attack, eyeing f7. And there aren't many ways for black to counter it, because um, the typical d5 move isn't possible, because uh, then simply Bishop can recapture and continue the threat, so black just loses a pawn. Um, bishop to e6 is uh, also impossible because that square is already covered twice by now. But black can play the unnatural h6 to cover uh, the fork. But the problem black faces now is um, that white has a, a second attack which is pretty hard to spot at first sight but um, it just goes to show how poor black's defense is at this point black and white can simply um, grab the pawn on h7 knowing uh, grab a free pawn which um, refutes this opening line <coughs> and of course black cannot recapture the knight because if black recaptures let's say rook takes Then white can play queen to h5 check. Now there are two possibilities. Um, let's say if um, g6, then queen takes pawn check with an attack on the rook and the king. If instead Knight to f7 is played to block uh, the check. Well, simply queen takes knight is mate. Of 
or if king to d7 white can play um, queen to g6 which is a fork between the rook and the mate on e6 so once again black will lose the rook if uh, for instance knight to b8 to create an escape queen takes rook and we can see that um, uh, white has an additional attack on the knight because of um, bishop takes knight and of course cannot be recaptured because of the pin on the king so um, if knight to g4 for instance queen takes a 5 check king c6 bishop d5 check king b6 and bishop to e6 and we can see that um, black is down in material and the king in a very uncomfortable position if instead knight to f7 just an example um, queen takes pawn check king c6 and queen takes knight so um, there's not much there for black to hope for if instead of um, retreating the knight to create an escape in this variation um, black can try um, queen to e7 which will lose the rook but prevent the mate also rook to h8 will get that mate on e6 so there are no real options for um, black to continue playing here after the clever knight takes pawn on h7 after a knight takes pawn and black realizes he cannot recapture the knight if he instead tries to save the bishop from um, being exchanged so if he wants to keep on to the bishop pair black only has one move that's um, bishop to e7 after which white can play queen to h5 uh, check leading to king to d7 bishop takes h6 and notice that black now has lost knight and white has two pieces under attack but none of those can be taken if say rook takes h7 white can play bishop to e6 check forcing um, king takes e6 leading to a um, queen takes f5 mate so recapturing the knight is out if black tries to recapture uh, the bishop say pawn takes bishop white can play queen takes pawn check king to e8 and then bishop to f7 mate so it's clear that um, black is in a lot of trouble after the capture of the pawn on uh, h7 so if we go back we see that um, the d6 move a natural developing move for black leads to um, huge complications alternatively black can take the pawn so just exchange pawns pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn after which white can continue with his attack and at this point there's uh, little defense against it so if say h6 is played prevent the knight jump note that uh, knight to e5 is covered by the knight on c6 well this defense will fail because of um, the simple knight takes pawn but the defense of the knight um, doesn't actually work because of if knight takes knight 
White can play Queen to H5 check with an attack on the knight. And after, um, let's say, g6 to block the check, queen takes knight, knight uh, check with um, a fork on the rook on h8, will be played. Alternatively, knight to f7 simply leads to mate. So after the exchange, h6 as a defense is impossible. Um, because after which black will lose the pawn on e5 if white spots it. Alternatively, if knight to f6 is played, which attacks the pawn on e4, but also covers h5 against uh, the queen check. So in a way this is um, giving black some defense. Um, then white can simply continue with his original idea, knight to g5 looking for um, a knight on f7 and again there's no real defense against it so if for instance queen to e7 to uh, get out of the fork white can instead play bishop to f7 check king to um, d8 and now knight to e6 which would have been a smothered mate But in this case, black can um, sacrifice his queen to get out of the check. Notice that the bishop still cannot be recaptured. Of course, this is losing for uh, black. So moving the queen obviously doesn't work. Moving the rook, say rook g8, of course fails immediately because of bishop takes rook. Um, all that black can do is play d5, typical move in these situations, but in this particular case, again, black will lose the pawn, because there are two attackers on it. So pawn takes, attacking the knight, knight flees, bishop b5 check, and there's no real way for um, black to counter the check except by playing c6 after which the pawn can be exchanged and white can hold on to his uh, extra pawn uh, because um, if for instance bishop to d7 is played uh, white can create a nice outpost with um, knight to e6 attacking the queen and of course the bishop cannot capture because of the pin so the queen moves Bishop takes, check, queen recaptures, and then simply continuing development is uh, winning for white. Bishop to um, g5, and notice that this pawn still cannot be taken, pawn that's protecting the knight. Of course, um, well, if knight takes, for instance, White can play queen takes knight, and if queen recaptures queen, uh, white has a triple fork, and black is down in material with um, a lost game. So that doesn't seem to work either. And again, this opening is refuted in um, this variation. If black exchanges, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, and then tries bishop to e7 as a defense against the advancing knight. Well, this defense of uh, black fails completely because of a um, queen to d5 creating a strong battery with the mate on um, f7. If d3 is played, perhaps best for uh, black is um, to play h6 immediately. So we can see that we can't play it after uh, exchanging pawns. 
but um, perhaps an immediate and tame h6 gives black the best chances for um, a good game.